We love using dynamic search ad campaigns in either low volume accounts or when a client wants to try to find new keyword ideas. Now, while we're setting up a dynamic search ad campaign, we're always trying to make sure that we have certain best practices in place before we even launch. So in this video, I'm going to show you what those best practices are. Now for this video, you're going to see that everything is paused because this is the account we use to record these videos. So just assume that everything is running like it's your account. The first best practice that we recommend is splitting out your targets by a certain theme. To show you what I mean, let's actually go into the campaign. And here we see I have two ad groups, one for blogs, one for courses. And where I got these from is I'm pretending to look at our own website. See, if we look on our website, we have a separate section for the blog and for courses. And the intent on these are going to be totally different. Yes, between the two of them, people want to learn something, but their dedication to learning is totally different. Our blogs are shorter commitment. You read something, you watch the video on it, you learn a little bit, you move on. Our courses take much more commitment. We make you pay for those. So not only is the user experience different between the two, but technically the call to action is different. If these were two groups that I wanted to target on my page, I wouldn't want to lump these two pages together. So for blogs, when I'm creating a dynamic ad target, and most likely you're doing this during the actual campaign setup, I'd want to choose specific pages. In this case, it's easy for us to just create a rule to tell Google to only include URLs containing blog. Our blogs are greater for awareness. I don't know if we've really gotten conversions from blogs, so I'd want to keep that one separate. I have to remember to click add, make sure it's selected, and then I can click save. Okay. Now going to the courses ad group, pretty much the same thing. I want to make sure I'm selecting specific pages, creating the rule, make sure I add it, and then I could save. Now this can open up a whole can of worms in terms of structuring your campaigns. Because if we go back to ad groups, you're probably thinking, Joe, if this is high level awareness and this is deeper intent where you're trying to get more conversions, why would you put them within the same campaign? Because budgets are controlled at the campaign level. Completely understand that. But maybe you have a smaller budget and you have to leave things all within the same campaign. Or if you're brand new to DSA and you just want to test it out, we understand. But again, this video is really not supposed to be about campaign structure. But if you do have the budget to split things out, yeah, maybe I would have my own DSA campaign just for blogs. And then each of my ad group would be splitting the blogs out by the channel. So let's pretend this campaign is just blogs. And then for ad group, I do specific pages again, creating the rule, telling Google only go after pages that contain blog and the URL also must contain Facebook. So now there's two rules with it. I would save it, get rid of this one. And then of course the ad group should be Facebook blogs. We'll create another ad group for Google blogs, another ad group for LinkedIn blogs. You get it, but really look at how you can break up your targeting into specific themes. It'll help you better understand what type of content is actually performing on your site. But if you are a smaller account or you already have an established campaign and you did lump everything together, that's going to lead to our second best practice. And that's going to be using the proper exclusions. Now I'm in a different DSA ad group. And when I see dynamic ad targets like this going after every single web page on the site, it's a red flag for me. I'm not saying they don't work. Definitely have seen it. I still prefer to structure it in the best practices we just talked about. And I also understand within the campaign settings, you can tell Google to only use all pages within a specific feed. So that'd be something I'd go back and check on. Is it actually targeting every page of the website or all pages within a specific feed? Either or, I need another layer of safety, and that is going to be your page exclusions. So let's pretend this ad target actually is going after every single page on our website. I told Google to just target paymediapros.com. Well, let's look at our website. Yes, we have CS Speak is important. Courses is important. Maybe we do want to leave the blog on there. About? Nah. Is it really a valuable page that I want to send people to? Probably not. Really not a lot on there. But also, what about the bottom? Privacy policy is a page. Other websites have terms and conditions as a page. So I'd probably want to start blocking out those low value pages. And we can do that by adding negative dynamic ad targets. It's the same process as you did choosing what you want to target. We're just going to tell Google what to exclude. So we can create rules, URL contains, privacy. Let's add that one. Let's add the about us. Notice that it's all here on the side. There's terms. Let's add that one. Won't apply to our website, but a lot of our clients have job openings listed on there. We typically don't want to include those in our campaigns, or you may have separate campaigns purposely targeting just job openings. So you want to exclude them from your current ones. Maybe add that to the mix. 
I would save those. And then any pages that fall within these rules will be blocked out from your targeting. Let's look at the other campaign. One more idea. And I want to choose blogs again. We're still on negative dynamic targets. This is pulling from a feed in an older video, but I'll add a new one. Remember, this ad group is blogs. Maybe I want to promote all blogs, except for Snapchat. Add this. So it's easier just to exclude Snapchat instead of creating a bunch of targeting rules for every other channel that we talk about. Or maybe you want to start filtering out old years. Maybe you have dates included in your URLs. I don't want to spend money promoting blog posts from 2012. That's old news. You can add it here. But as we've seen, you can exclude by page feed as well, especially if you're using labels within your page feed. So another best practice I have, whether you're using as targeting or excluding, is making sure that you're keeping your page feeds up to date. So go to tools, then we want business data, and here we have specific page feeds. Let's click into one. Here we see another example of what you may want to exclude, your sitemap. Sticking with the blog example, let's say you did want to target every blog on the site. They're all still relevant, but there were just a handful here and there that you may not want to ever promote. Add them to a page feed, pull in a custom label, and like we saw in the last ad group with the negative dynamic ad targets, anything with this particular label, we can exclude. Another idea for targeting, we have a client that wants to have a DSA campaign off of all of their dedicated PPC landing pages. And all those PPC landing pages don't have an easy URL naming convention where we'll easily group them all together. They don't have like LP in the URL so they know they're all landing pages. So we use a feed. It's on our end to make sure that we're updating the feed as we create new landing pages. It's also on our end that we need to start removing old landing pages that we see not perform well. So yes, feeds make adding and excluding a lot easier, but if you're not updating your feeds as you need, it can really hurt optimization and future performance. Let's talk about another best practice. The next best practice would be not forgetting about ad testing. With dynamic search ads, Google pulls your URLs and all of your headlines. It really just gives us the description to work with. So first thing I would do after you start launching some ads would be to go into the ad preview tool for this campaign and start seeing what your headlines could be. If it's pulling weird content from the page, you might need to go and start editing certain elements of your landing pages that you're using for the dynamic search ad campaign. One example is that we had a client that did create dedicated landing pages and they just left the title tag of the page as landing page. And we found examples that were out gaining impressions and clicks and costs where the headline literally just said landing page, not good. So we went ahead and updated some of those elements like the title tags, the H1s on the pages and so on. Besides that, we still wanna make sure that we're testing different descriptions, the part that we can always control. So make sure you're not just creating one ad and letting it run. Try to create descriptions that really speak to what your targeting says. This goes back to the first best practice that we have of trying to break your dynamic search ads into more specific themes so you can tailor the ad copy better. So it's a lot harder to do if you're targeting every page of the website all within one ad group. And if you feel that you're running out of ideas, maybe your ad group themes don't have a ton of pages, you're starting to get stuck, even the chat GPT suggestions that you're trying to come up with different variants aren't really that unique, here's an idea that you can probably test. That would be ad customizers. Start by typing in an opening curly brace, and here we have a couple options to really customize your ads. If you have a sale or any sort of event that happens at a specific date, you can choose the countdown customizer, letting people know how many days or hours left until the event or promo is over. Not gonna dive too deep into this one because I already have a video about the countdown customizer. You can check that one out here, but you can also use the if function. And you have two options, device or audience. So in this case, you can say, if the user is part of this audience, choose your audience, click save. Now I'm telling Google, if the user who sees this ad is in part of this audience of anyone who's seen any of our YouTube videos from the past 540 days, then they get to see a description of something along those lines. Anyone else who's not a part of this audience will see a totally different description. Yes, make sure you utilize the actual 90 characters for the descriptions, I totally get that. If I apply it, that will be your description for it. We see it in the preview over here. Now the other option, if I use if function again, was device. If the device is mobile, they see one message. If it's not, they see a different message, you get it. While description testing isn't the most appealing, your headlines will still have the biggest impact, it's still the best that we got. And understand you have more options than just trying to come up with your own descriptions yourself. And the last best practice, in my opinion, is one of the most important ones. And that is 
making sure you're not cannibalizing your actual search campaigns. We'd love to use dynamic search ad campaigns to expand reach and help us find new keyword ideas. We don't want to take away from the campaigns that we're already running. So while I'm in the campaign view, I want to make sure I'm going to search keywords and I want to download all of the active keywords that we're running in the account. What we do next is go to tools, shared library, and then exclusion lists. I'll create a new list. Let me name it. Something showing that this negative keyword list is for our DSA campaigns and I'm including all active keywords. We'll paste them in here. Sadly, with a new list, we have to save it first. Go back in the list. If I scroll down, then we can start adding this exclusion list to our DSA campaigns. So hopefully you have good naming conventions. There's one. Apparently, even under our demo videos, we don't have consistent naming conventions. There's the other one. Click done. And now all of your active keywords in any search campaigns that you're currently running will be excluded from DSA. So DSA doesn't take away traffic from your much more controlled campaigns. This is another important step to stay on top of. As you're adding new search campaigns, you want to make sure all of those new keywords continue to be excluded from DSA. As you review the search term reports in DSA and you find new keywords that you add to actual search campaigns, make sure you continue to exclude those from DSA so DSA can do what it does best continue to find new search opportunities. The best practices I talked about, I feel are the most important ones to have a good foundation for success with dynamic search ads. If there are some best practices that you've seen work well in your search campaigns, we'd love to hear them. So let everyone know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.